Hey guys, we're back. Welcome back to At Laura's Table. Today, we are gonna be working on a strawberry rhubarb cobbler. Um, as we wait on some people to join us, I wanted to tell you a little about my inspiration for a strawberry rhubarb cobbler. My grandmother, who I referred to as Mima, um, always made strawberry rhubarb pies for me as a little girl because I love that tart zing that um, rhubarb brings to the table. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with rhubarb. It probably depends on where you live, but um, it happens to be one of my favorite things and pie crust frustrates me. So I thought I would meld two things I know well, which is strawberry rhubarb and a cobbler because cobblers are super simple. What I'm gonna teach you today is like the easiest cobbler recipe ever in all of creation and you can use any kind of fruit. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. But once you get this down, which is super crazy simple, you can use all kinds of fruit, whatever you have in your fridge, whatever you have in your freezer, whatever you have in your pantry, and it's quick and you can do it when you're having guests or just for a quick um, weeknight dessert. So um, again, as people are hopping on and joining us, we're gonna do a strawberry rhubarb cobbler instead of a pie because Pie crusts sometimes make me sad, and we don't have time for that, so we're not gonna be sad. We're gonna be glad that it's spring, and the sun is out, and the birds are singing, and um, I found rhubarb in the grocery store. So, you know, we can't stay home forever. We are trying to be safe, but I had to get food to feed these people I live with. So, if you're not familiar with rhubarb, this is what it's gonna look like in your grocery store, or if you get to go to the farmer's market, if it happens to have leaves attached, please don't eat them. You're not supposed to. It's not good for you. They're not edible. But the first thing we want to do to get started on our cobbler is we want to take our four tablespoons of butter and we are going to cut these up and get them in our eight by eight pan. I used my pretty pan for our reveal or as I like to call it, our as seen on TV. You don't have to wait 50 minutes for my cobbler to be done. It miraculously is already ready for you to see. You don't have to listen to me chatter for 50 minutes. So I'm just gonna cut this in chunks and we're gonna stick this in the oven. Um, I preheated my oven to 425 degrees. Now this will actually bake for 50 minutes at 350. Um, the reason I cranked the temperature up to 425 for this butter to preheat, see how meticulous I was with that? I'm gonna stick this in the oven. The reason I cranked the heat for that butter to melt and that pan to get hot is strawberries have more moisture than a lot of fruits that you would put in a typical cobbler. And we want this batter to almost start to cook immediately as soon as it hits that hot butter the same kind of technique that we did on grandma's cornbread in the cast iron skillet, if you watched that video that we did together, you're gonna get a sizzle and it's gonna start to sear that um, batter that we make here in a minute. And the reason you wanna do that is because there's higher moisture content in this fruit. So it's not rocket science. We just wanna bring it to a higher temperature and then lower it. So start it at 425. Stick your pan with your butter in there and let it start to melt. And we're gonna work on our strawberries and rhubarb for a second. So I cut my rhubarb, my hands are clean, into these little bite-sized pieces. I want you to be able to see that, you see? Little bite-sized pieces. I dropped one, there we go. And then I chopped up my strawberries. So this is a cup and a half of chopped rhubarb and a cup of strawberries. See, this is really, difficult, see? And I'm gonna take a quarter cup, oop, I just dumped some of that on the counter, we're really cooking here, of sugar and put it over my fruit and a squeeze of lemon. On your recipe, I put a teaspoon, but what I actually do is actually squeeze 
a fresh lemon over it if I have one because fresh is better. And then toss this with your fruit and get it stirred up nice and well, okay? You're gonna let that fruit start to macerate. People are saying hello to me. Hi there. Oh, my Aunt Donna, hi, I love you. So glad to see you. I wore my glasses so I could see all my friends and family on there. Aunt Donna knows all about Mima's strawberry rhubarb pies. But I'm not doing pie because pie crust makes me sad. So we won't worry about that. So we're going to sit our fruit off to the side for just a minute, okay? And we're going to talk about this batter for our cobbler. Um, if you're from the South, you've probably heard the cup, cup, cup batter recipe. It's like the simplest thing you've ever done in your life. It's a cup of self-rising flour, a cup of sugar, and a cup of milk. So, seriously, I just told you the recipe, and that's pretty easy. As long as you don't mess up and use plain flour, which is, in other words, in the cooking world, is all-purpose flour. But at my house, for years, it was plain flour. You know, I'm sorry. I can't get away from my raisin. It's just who I am. It's fine. As long as you don't do that and it turns into this flat mess, you'll be fine. Self-rising flour, one cup into my bowl, okay? Create a little dust storm. The rest of my sugar, which is a cup of sugar, you wanna whisk that together just a little bit, okay? Just to get it incorporated well. All, all my friends, hi Miss Susan. So, I think all my people that are on right now know what rhubarb is. We need to tell the rest of the world what rhubarb is because it means spring has arrived. So let me look and see. My butter's only been in about four minutes. We need that to melt just a little bit more. So I need you friends and family to tell me how you guys are holding up with this quarantine. Are you about ready to have your roots done and your nails done and all the things done and get out in the sunshine? I was considering doing a post for you guys about what I use on my nails because I've been doing my own nails for years and how I hide my little mark up through here that shows it's been a while since I've seen my hair girl. But I didn't know if you guys wanted me to stick to food or if you wanted me to um, venture off a little bit and give you some tips and tricks for what uh, keeps everything tidied up a little bit. Anyway, um, here in a minute, we're going to pull that out and we're going to assemble this. And you're going to be like, that's like the easiest thing I've ever seen in my life. So when you're not doing the strawberry rhubarb, I'll tell you, this was my mother's um, cobbler recipe to cup and cup and cup. And the thing she did the most for us was wild blackberries when they would come into the season. And that was such a short season when we ran out of the ones that we had frozen, we would do peaches. You can use canned peaches that you've drained the syrup or juice off of. You can do frozen peaches, which is really excellent because they have such wonderful flavor. It's like you took all the time and all that to peel peaches and cut them up and all that crazy mess, but you don't have to go through all the trouble. What I will tell you is if you do the peaches, toss them in a little bit of cinnamon. It takes it to the next level. They're so delicious. It's so good. So let me see how our butter's doing. See if it's ready for us to assemble. Oh yeah, starting to bubble, which is always a good sign. So you're gonna wanna leave your butter in six to eight minutes. But I want you to see, see how my butter's melted? And you want to roll this around in here, make sure the whole bottom of this pan is covered in that butter. I whisked in my milk. Okay, this may be a little lumpy. That's okay as long as you get it all incorporated. You pour this into the center of your dish in that butter. Scrape it all out. So we want all that yummy goodness, okay? All right, now 
I'm going to scrape these berries in the middle of all of this concoction we just created. And you're gonna take this spoon and spread these berries out because you want fruit in all the corners. I mean, we all want the corner piece, right? You're all gonna go, no, I want the middle. I want the gooey middle. I want the corner and I want strawberries and rhubarb in my corner piece. So I'm gonna try and hold this up so you can see it and not dump it on the counter because like I said, we're really cooking. Can you see what I did here? I don't want to tip it out. All right, I'm gonna open the oven and then stick it in because I don't have three arms, I only have two. All right, so this, I have to turn the oven down because it's at 425. We want to put this in and turn the oven down to 350. Okay, again, that was because my strawberries have a higher moisture content than the other fruits that we typically use, like blackberries, blueberries, that kind of thing. And I know I'm talking away from the camera, so I don't know if y'all can hear me or not. So I set my timer to 50 minutes, all right? Let me clean up my mess here, and I'm gonna show you the one I made for you in a pretty pan. It's all done. See, look, I made a mess, because we're really cooking here. All right, anybody have any questions for me? Let me see. All right, so Susan says she wants me to tell her all my secrets. I'm not gonna tell you all my secrets, but I'll tell you some of my secrets. I do have a video that I made for you guys I haven't shared yet about um, pruning a fiddle leaf fig. There's probably like four of you that own a fiddle leaf fig, but when I got mine, I had to search and search and search the internet, like the World Wide Web, to figure it out. Now I've had one for years and I know how to do it. And maybe you need to know how to do it. Anyway, look how beautiful. Isn't it pretty? And it smells so good. And it's even more delicious. So, let's serve some up. Oh, did you hear that crunch? Listen to this. Do you hear that crunch? <clears throat> I'm sorry, it's just so delicious, I can't help myself. But part of the reason I wanted to do this, I wanted this to be done on the bottom. Can you see that? See how it's cooked on the bottom? When I did it, the regular just bake it at 350 degrees for an hour, it was a goopy, sloppy mess at the bottom. So we had to go back to the drawing board and practice again. So, it's worth it because rhubarb, oh gosh, does it take me back. I'm telling you, I spent more good days in my grandmother's kitchen. Ooh. That is like heaven. You don't even know, but you need to know. And I don't care if you live in New Jersey or Washington State, it doesn't matter. You need to find it if you have to plant it, it'll come back every year and you'll have your own and you won't even have to go by the store. It's so delicious. And this, with that little bit of zing tang tart thing that it has, is so fantastic with vanilla ice cream. But I love sour tang zing. So this, for me, is divine. Anyway, I love you guys. I'm so thankful you come and visit with me. I'm glad to see you. I hope that you will try this and share it with your family. Even with a big hole in it, it's still so pretty. And um, it's easy, but I have the printable recipe on my blog. I'd love it if you would share my blog, my Facebook page, my Instagram with all your people. Please do. There's going to be stuff on there that um, I don't have posted on Facebook. Um, I did a, you have to know this, I did a photo tutorial on a pork carnitas. It is ridiculous. You have to make it because doing a Facebook Live like this for an uh, Instapot recipe, you don't want to stand here with me for three hours and us visit where I'm talking to a camera and you just kind of look at me you don't want to do that, but 
I've made it twice since then. I've actually made it three times, two for the test and once for the kids. And when my children are posting on Instagram about the food I made and telling all their friends it's legit and all these things they say, you need to make that food. And if it's too much for your family, portion it out and freeze it so you cook once and then you have it for later. Just trust me on these things. When I tell you it's good, it's worth doing, okay? Anyway, I love you guys. I hope to see you again soon. Enjoy your cobbler. Try it with other fruits. And um, if you have questions, you can send me a message. I'll be happy to answer it. And hugs and kisses. Here's your virtual hug. Since we're not supposed to hug, I'd hug you if you were here. I'd hug you your neck right now. Anyway, love you guys. See you soon.